Hello everybody! In this quick video tutorial I want to discuss with you why you should not use error bars that show standard deviations if you want to assess whether samples are significantly different from each other. So let's assume we have two samples here. So sample one, uh, that is this sample here, and it has a sample mean of 50, whatever this 50 is. So that's indicated here. We have a standard deviation of 10 and we have a very large sample set. Uh, we have 10,000 uh, observations. And uh, very often we see this uh, represented by these uh, bar graphs. So we've got the mean here, we've got an error bar, and this error bar contains the standard deviation. So if we've got 50 as the mean, it would be plus minus the standard deviation. So the error bars would be at 60 and 40. Now let's compare that to sample uh, 2. And uh, where we have basically uh, a mean of 53, so that's this one here. We also have a standard deviation of 10, so the error bars would go from 63 to 43, and we have a large sample size, again, of 10,000. And intuitively, we would say, okay, the, the error bars, there is a huge overlap between these error bars here, so uh, our intuition tells us that the samples are not significantly different from each other. So we say both sample means are probably from the same uh, sample, from the same population. Now, that is our intuition. But is this intuition actually true? We could now do... Uh, a simple null hypothesis testing. Uh, we could use, for example, a t-test if we assume that our samples are from um, a normal distributed population and uh, that the sample uh, data types are continuous uh, samples or continuous data. So we could perform uh, a t-test and uh, we can do that with an online calculator. Uh, my favorite online calculator here is evanmiller.org. And if we go to a two sample t-test, we can actually put in our numbers. So for the sample one, the summary, we had a 50 mean, 10 uh, standard deviation and a sample size of 10,000. And for sample two, we had 53. 10 and 10,000. And we let the calculator do the calculation and it will calculate a p-value. And we find that the p-value is much smaller than 0 0.001. And the verdict is that the two samples are significantly different from each other. And uh, the calculator even says that the sample 2 mean is uh, greater. So we find that the two samples are statistically significantly different from each other, although the error bars that we have here with our standard deviation uh, overlap to uh, a vast extent. So we need to be really careful with the standard deviation error bars. Uh, they don't tell us whether the samples are statistically significant different from each other. Now, surely, if the error bars don't overlap, surely then we can say the samples are different. So let's take another example here. So here we have sample 1. Sample 1 has a mean of 50, whatever this is, standard deviation of 5, and a sample size of 3. So here we've got 50 and a standard deviation. So our error bar would be between 55 and 45. And now let's compare that to another sample, sample 2, where we have a mean of 60, 
a standard deviation of 4, so that gives us an error bar of 46 to 64 to 56, and we also have a sample size of 3. And what we see is that the error bars don't overlap. So surely this gives us a good indication that the two samples are statistically different from each other. Now let's do the t-test again. We make the assumption that the uh, data are continuous and that they are from normal distributed population. So we can use our uh, t-test calculator, evanmiller.org, which is a fantastic calculator. So here we've got the sample summary, 50 for the mean, 5 for the standard deviation, 3 for the uh, observations, and sample 2, we have 60, 4, and 3. And we ask the calculator to uh, find the p-value. And indeed, it calculates a p-value. The p-value is... Uh, 0.057. And if we assume a significance level alpha of uh, 5%, we see that the p-value is larger than our significance level alpha. This means that there is no significant difference between the two samples. So, what we see here is that although the error bars with the standard deviations do not overlap, in this particular case, we find that the samples are not different. In the previous example, we found that the when the standard deviation error bars do overlap, we found that the samples were statistically significantly different. And that's a, a little bit, you know, counterintuitive from what we learn in our statistics uh, lessons. The reason why this is a sort of the case is it depends on the sample sizes. Here we've got, in our first example, we've got large sample sizes, whereas in our second example, we've got very small sample sizes here. And the sample size has a massive impact on the outcome of the t-test uh, in our t-statistics, uh, but it is not reflected uh, really in the standard deviations. So therefore, we should not use error bars with standard deviations if we want to make a judgment whether our two samples are statistically different from each other. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.